A Lit in Ten Discussion with Lisa M. Kendrick, the poets John Donne and Ben Johnson. John Donne was a Catholic who later became an Anglican priest, whose sermons packed crowds into St. Paul's Cathedral. He was known as a ladies' man until suddenly at the age of 25, he married the 17-year-old daughter of a noble and, since he had not asked permission, lost his court job and lived for several years penniless. His wife died at 33 from complications in childbirth. His poetry is as dynamic as his life, offering a range of topics from lust to piety. Many poets from Dunn's time wrote using a metaphysical conceit. This literary element is similar to a metaphor or simile, but it compares something that's extremely concrete, scientific even, with something abstract that appears to have no common thread at first. Similarly, a paradox is used often also. This device states an idea or image that seems to contradict itself, but then is proven via inference and diction choices to be true. In A Valediction, Forbidding Mourning, the speaker urges his wife not to be emotional or mourn his absence when he is away on business, because their love is strong enough to endure it. He uses the metaphysical conceit of their love being like a compass, where his wife is the stationary arm and he is the arm that revolves, always attached to their love a perfect circle. He uses a paradox in lines 9-12, through 12, implying that although the movement of planets seems dangerous, their rotations cause no harm on Earth. In Holy Sonnet 10, the speaker personifies death and says that death should not be proud of its fearsome reputation. The speaker describes how death comes for everyone, poor and wealthy alike, good men who are ready to die and bad men who are not. But, he says, the death of men is only temporary because God will come, resurrect the good people, and then, because humans will be made immortal for heaven, death will then die. That statement, of course, contains the paradox. Ben Johnson was a controversial figure. He received more fame than Shakespeare as a playwright, but because he liked to poke political fun at the establishment and he had a really bad temper, he didn't live a settled existence. His plays are satiric comedies, where he pushed for drama to be made and respected as a work of art, rather than just body crowd pleasers. His poetry is considered some of the strongest of the time because of his use of less elevated writing and down-to-earth topics before such things were mainstream. Many poets reflect on death, and some write a poem that serves as an epitaph, which commemorates someone's death. Poets from this time period didn't always rhyme, but they did more often than poets do today. Rhyme which occurs at the end of lines creates a rhyme scheme. Rhyme, even if within a line rather than the end of a line, might be an exact rhyme, when vowel sounds in two words sound exactly the same, or a slant rhyme, when those sounds do not exactly match. On My First Son is an epitaph in which the speaker mourns the death of his seven-year-old son. He tries to console himself with the idea that his son has escaped the hardships of life. He laments that his son was his best piece of poetry, and decides that he must keep himself from loving so much again in order to spare himself pain. The speaker conveys a mood of sad and bitter determination. The speaker also considers it a sin to have loved anything so much. In the lyric poem, Song to Celia, the speaker expresses his deep passion for Celia and begs her to love him. When she sends back his gift of roses, instead of allowing himself to be disheartened, he decides that the roses are even better now because they have taken on her scent. It seems that this love is only one-sided, though it may be that Celia likes to encourage the speaker for her own purposes, because she did not take the roses, breathed them in, then sent them back. There are hundreds of sonnets written from this time period. The most popular form of sonnet in England is called Shakespearean. However, although Shakespeare popularized it, the Shakespearean sonnet was developed in the 16th century by the Earl of Surrey. This type of sonnet has 14 lines, is written in iambic pentameter, imbuing each line with 10 to 12 syllables, has the rhyme scheme of A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G, contrary to other forms, and is defined by three quatrains and a couplet. Thanks for stopping by. Nothing enhances cognitive abilities, increases vocabulary, or expands horizons more than reading. Be sure to check out my other videos in this Lit in 10 discussion series.